Pray, pray, pray anytime. Pray when you said. Pray when you're glad. Pray when you're weak. Pray when you're strong. Just pray and pray, cause anytime is prayer time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father God, we want to thank and praise you for giving us a very powerful instrument of prayer. Through prayer, we are able to attain every praise that you need in life. Put in us the praise of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome again to our series on prayer. As we told you last time, this year, as was declared by Pope Francis, is the year of prayer, the year 2024. This is a special year. And today, we want to look at, you know, how effectively should you and I pray to God? You know, we have a lot of prayers everywhere. People pray, there are many religions, there are many churches, there are many denominations. People pray every day. And my dear people of God, as we said last time, prayer gives us an opportunity of encountering the most powerful person who happens to be Jesus, our Father, and the Holy Spirit. Every time we pray, we have a chance of meeting the best. And who is the best? God the Father is the best. Who is the best? Jesus Christ is the best. The Holy Spirit is the best, the Almighty, the All-Powerful, the Omnipotent God. This is what prayer does to us. We encounter, including the angels, the Blessed Virgin Mary, we encounter the saints. You and I, we cannot just pray the way we want to pray. Remember, Jesus himself taught us how to pray. God himself has taught us how to pray. You cannot just pray the way you want. And that's why when you are king and you look at the word of God, remember, the word of God guides us. And the word of God carries the mind of God. The mind of God about prayer. And that's why for anyone who has decided that he or she wants to pray and to pray so deeply and to pray so effectively, you should be able to know what God says about prayer, what the Word of God says about prayer. Number one, anybody who wants to pray ought to know that when sin is in my life, when sin is within me. Sin is a big block that will prevent me from praying effectively. And that's why when we look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 31, it says that we know that God does not listen to sinners. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but He does listen to people who honor Him. When you look also at Prophet Isaiah chapter 59, 1 and 2, it says that the hands of the Lord are not too short, that He cannot save us, nor His ears dull, that He cannot hear our prayers. The Bible says that it is because of our iniquities, our sins, that He does not hear us. Do you want God to hear you every time you go for prayers? So the Bible says it is because of our iniquities that He does not hear us. And that is why we should be very, very careful when we want to pray. Anybody who wants a relationship with God through communication with God through prayer should know that God, prayer, and sin don't go together. Prayer and sin, you know, are opposed to each other. 
And that is why you and I must make efforts to overcome all the sins in our life. You and I must make efforts to repent of any known sin in your life before you pray. Otherwise, it is written, Maombi ya mwenye zambi ni kelele mbele ya mwenye. Maombi ya yule na nisali akiwa na zambi ni kelele tuku, kelele, kelele. And then, anybody who wants to pray, to worship God, must also know that until you forgive others, you cannot pray. Your prayers cannot be answered by God. Every time you stand praying, you must forgive. That is Mark's Gospel chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. Every time you stand praying, you must forgive. Many people want to pray, but they don't want to forgive. Many people want to sing to God, but they don't want to forgive others. Many people want to speak to God, but they don't want to speak to their neighbors. How can you speak to God that you don't see, and the, your neighbor that you see, your sister, your brother, your husband, you don't speak to? God says that anybody who wants to pray must be ready to forgive. If you don't forgive others, then you cannot stand before God and worship God. Another thing that you and I ought to know is that you cannot pray without faith. When we read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says that without faith you cannot please God. In fact, those who benefited from Jesus, when Jesus was living as a human being in this world, were people who believed. And most often Jesus would tell them, it is your faith that has saved you. You know, and Jesus would ask them, do you believe that I can do this? Jesus values faith so much. Jesus wants you to trust him. When you trust Jesus, when you believe in Jesus, your prayers will be effective. And even when you read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 21 to 22, it is clearly stated, you know, that we, you have faith. You can command this mountain to move and the mountain will move. Do you have mountains in your life? Do you have mountains in your family? Do you have mountains in the church today? Do we have mountains in our institutions today? There are so many mountains within us, in our families. And it is our fault that these mountains are in our lives. Because prayer of faith can remove the mountains, can, you know, can tell the mountains, be uprooted and the mountains will be uprooted, be crushed and the mountains will be crushed. We can tell sicknesses, we can tell all sorts of problems, we can even speak to the doors and everything, you know, obeys prayer. Because prayer is something which is very, very powerful, more powerful than any atomic bomb. I have to tell you, if only people would rediscover what this prayer is, nobody today would sleep without prayer. Nobody today would live without prayer. And then, we hear Jesus continue saying in the same verse, 21 verse 22, verse 22, he says, If you have faith, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. There is this aspect of faith. When you want to pray, faith must be at the center of prayer. Faith is one of the ingredients of prayer. You remove faith, you're wasting time in prayer. You remove purity of heart, you're wasting your time in prayer. And that is why it is important that we know how to pray. When we come to pray, we don't just mention words. Prayers must come from the depths of our hearts, from the deep bottom of our hearts. And another thing that anyone who wants to pray 
There is no way you can pray without the help of the Holy Spirit. When we look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, from verse 21 to 24, Jesus was at the well in Samaria. And here he's speaking to a Samaritan woman. And Jesus is telling the Samaritan woman that God is spirit. And those who worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. And in fact, he's telling this Samaritan woman that you Samaritans, you really do not know what you're worshipping. Look at this. When somebody tells you, you've been worshipping, you've been praying, you've been singing, and somebody comes and tells you that you do not know whom you are worshipping, you do not know what you are worshipping, this could be an insult on your part. And you will not feel nice, you will not feel good. So Jesus told this Samaritan woman, we, the Jews, we know whom we worship. But you, the Samaritans, you do not know whom the one you are worshipping. Do you truly know the God that you pray to? Do you really know the God that you worship? If you know this God, why do you worship him in a state of sin? If you know your God, why do you worship him with unforgiveness, with anger in your heart? Why do you worship him without honoring him? And that is why it is very, very important to know the God that you are worshipping. And then Jesus goes on and she tells the Samaritan woman that God is spirit. Those who worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And the Bible goes on to say the kind of uh, people like this are the people that God is looking for. God is looking for a man, a woman, a boy, a girl who will worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. When we look again at the Romans chapter 8 verse 26, it reminds us, it is connected with this text. It says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how we ought to worship. We do not know how we ought to worship God. Do you really know how you ought to worship God? That means that anybody who wants to pray must involve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer. We do not know how to pray. You do not know how to pray. And that's why hold on the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to help you pray, to teach you how to pray. Because if you ignore the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit, when it's not in your life, then how will you pray without the Holy Spirit? How will you honor God without the Holy Spirit? He's there to help us in our weaknesses. We do not know how to pray. And anybody who does not know how to pray will seek for the help of the Holy Spirit. We'll invite the Holy Spirit. And when he or she prays, we'll pray with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that is why, my dear people of God, my dear children, my dear brothers, let us invoke the Holy Spirit in our prayer life. That is why today we see so many people coming to the church. We see so many people going to different denominations. We see so many people moving up and down, praying, you know, worshiping God. But we don't see the corresponding transformation, you know, in the lives of people. If we've been praying all this time, and the prayers that we pray cannot help us come out of hatred, if I've been praying all this time, and my prayers cannot help me come out of anger, come out of immorality, if my prayers cannot help me come out of stealing, if my prayers cannot help me be transformed person, then those prayers have no power to take me to heaven. If the prayers that you have, you are not a beneficiary of the prayers that you, you pray. You are not a beneficiary of the worshipping that you offer to God. Then, I want to tell you, then you really must rediscover how to pray well. Because if you say that you pray and you cannot forgive your neighbor and you are a prayerful person, 
if the prayers cannot help you to forgive, if prayers cannot help you come out of drunkardness, if prayers cannot help you to stop stealing, if prayer cannot help you to stop committing sin, then we do not know how to pray. We do not know how to pray. Look at the evil that is in the world. If only the Christians and all God's spirit people would be able to pray to God, today the evil one will not operate anywhere. But because we have taken prayer so casually, because we have ignored prayer, because we have taken prayer for granted, we are wasting time. We are wasting time. Let us learn how to pray. Let us rediscover, you know, the power of prayer in our lives. And remember that you cannot pray properly in disasters of the it is the presence of Jesus in your heart. You have to accept the Lord Jesus in your heart. Then your prayers will work. And remember also, when you look at John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, Jesus is saying something there very, very powerful. Uh, you've not asked for anything in my name. Whatever you ask for in my name, you know, you, it will be granted unto you. You have to know the power that is in the name of Jesus. You have to know the power that is in this name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. The serving name of Jesus Christ. When you pray with the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is honored by God the Father. When you use this name, Jesus, the Father will listen to your prayers. This name is, is a, a name that contains all the favors. You know, the name Jesus. Whatever you ask for in my name will be granted unto you. Do you know the power that is in the name of Jesus? Do you know the graces that are in the name of Jesus? Do you know the value that God has put in the name of Jesus? Every time the name of Jesus is mentioned, every knee bows including the knee of the devil. Everything goes down. If only the Christians knew what the name of Jesus is, their prayers would be very, very effective and very, very powerful. May the Lord bless you as we go deeper and deeper into prayer life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The office is in heaven, they're opened up for you, every second, every minute, in every hour. In case of an emergence, just dial the toll-free number and connect with the Father above. Pray, pray, my mother. Pray anytime. Just pray. Pray when you say and pray. Pray when you pray. pray when you're weak. Pray when you pray weak. when you're strong. Pray when you're strong. Just pray and pray. Cause anytime is prayer time.